Yo, what is going on my dudes? Welcome to another RuneScape news coverage video. For this video, we're going to be discussing a rework to the cooking guild. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Let's go. Alright guys, this is something that Mod Tomb is working on, or at least was shown off in the Game Jam, and yeah, it's basically a complete overhaul to the Cooking Guild. So instead of having a small building with a bank and a cooking range, maybe the odd Cooking Apple Spawner 2 that we do have now in the current Cook Guild, they're hoping to make the Cooking Guild much, much better. Following Mod Timbo's design for what he wants guilds to become, which means that we can expect more guild reworks in the future. I've already talked on the channel of the Artisan's Workshop becoming the new Smithing Guild, so it seems safe to say that this trend will continue on to more guilds. Which I'm sure is pretty exciting, it's really good to see that piece of content in the game actually be viable in this day and age. Anyways, the core mechanic of this revamp is going to be very similar to how it works with the Thieving's Guild. Basically, there's going to be different tiers for the guild that you will unlock, around four or so different tiers, and they will require many quests to complete in order to unlock the next tier. Now these tiers will have progressively higher cooking levels to complete in order to upgrade your guild. Starting from 30 cooking and potentially all the way up to 90 or even 99 cooking at the highest. Now the higher end of tiers are very loosely worked on so they may or may not reach the level 99 brackets but there will be a tiered system so to speak. Just so, you know, you get that in your mind. Very similar, like I said, to the Thieves Guild that we have now. Now, each mini quest you complete and each tier you unlock will also unlock a new type of cooking method or cooking mechanic that we have yet to see in the game. So let's have a rundown of the various different mini quests. Bear in mind, the first two will be free to play. However, the reward from the second one may not end up being free to play. So the first one is dough themed. Basically, you're going to talk to the associated cook and he'll see you gathering ingredients around the free to play game world in order to create a special type of bread and then cooking it. And then you hand it in and then you're complete. This first tier will unlock something known as dough balls. Dough balls will be tradable and stackable. They are described as basically the broad arrows for cooking. So I imagine you could just take these anywhere and you'll be able to train your cooking with them. Basically, you'll take the raw dough balls, you'll then roll them, and then you'll cook them. All three stages, the raw, rolled, and cooked, are all stackable. And it aims to be some pretty decent XP, or at least that's what they intend for it to be. Rolled dough balls can be cooked on a fire, and they may end up making cooked dough balls be some kind of reward currency for the guild itself, but that is yet to be seen. At face value, it does seem like a pretty good first perk for unlocking at a pretty low level. Moving on to the second mini quest, you'll be talking to another cook, which will see you gathering different brews and ales around the various different free-to-play hubs. This one is not as realized as the previous, but basically you'll be unlocking brewing of some sort. We currently have brewing already in the game, but it's very underutilized, and Mod Timbo even said in the stream that he does want to see some nice new neat rewards in this space of content. They don't know exactly what they want to do with it, but they do want to add some form of beneficial perks to brewing, and this will be unlocked in the second mini quest. It's kind of hard to gauge how beneficial this will be at this point because a lot of the ideas that they're still working on is very much up in the air. So we're going to have to wait and see for this one. Now, the third mini quest, the NPC actually wants you to open up a smoker in the guild that will allow you to smoke various meats. Don't know to what extent you're going to be doing that, but doing so or completing this mini quest rather will unlock new smoking mechanics. Now, the idea behind this is that using the new smoker to smoke the meat will give you a specific buff to that meat or fish for a period of time. So it's basically a flat out buff to any type of food that you happen to smoke. Again, these things aren't fully realized. We don't know what kind of buffs, etc. But it is, or it seems like it would be a really nice benefit. 
They could choose to make it beneficial for combat, or they could keep it as other benefits that remain within skilling. I guess time will tell what direction they end up taking this, so we'll see. Now moving on, we have the fourth mini quest, and this revolves around stewing. I don't know what extent this is, like I said, as we go towards the back end of the tiers, these are the most loosely fleshed out, but... At some point, you're going to be helping out with making some sort of stew, I would imagine. And completing this mini quest will unlock new stewing mechanics. Basically, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be throwing ingredients into a stew. And then you're going to have some kind of waiting period. They say a minimum of probably about two hours, which would potentially have even better stats or effects the longer you leave it. But when it's complete, you'll receive buffs depending on the ingredients. So I don't know if that means that players will realize a certain combination of ingredients will give certain desired outcomes, and then people will find out the most optimal stews to create for any given situation. I mean, that seems like what it's implying, and I can see that actually being a really cool update to the cooking skill as a whole. They mentioned things like a percent slayer buff, fishing buff, farming buffs, possibilities are endless. But apparently it all happens at once, and you don't know which ingredients cause what. So there's going to be a little bit of trial and error when this launches to figure out what you need to get closer to what you want to achieve with these stews. And again, I guess, like I said, players will probably find the most optimal combinations, and soon enough we'll know what to make if we're after certain perks. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the mini quest, but we actually have another new mechanic that will come with this, and it's called cooks around the world basically this is some form of contract system now when you progress through the guild unlocks and finish up the mini quests there will be chefs from around the world that will recognize you the way it will work as you're doing any form of cooking there is a chance for one of these chefs to appear and give you a cooking contract basically it'll have ingredients that you need to gather yourself for example, if it asks for some sailfish, you need to have fished those sailfish yourself after getting that contract. Now, these various chefs that pop up and give you tasks will not give you contracts for things that you can't fish or cook, so you won't have to worry about that at all. Now, contracts would give you a buff related to that specific chef. For example, they give the gnome cooking buff from the gnome chef on top of a standard 1-2% cooking XP boost that would probably last for a good few hours. They also mentioned that the contract buffs will stack. And the example that they give in this video is that, let's say you complete 15 contracts, you'll have a potential of somewhere around 15 to 20% cooking XP buff for a few hours. So these contracts seem very powerful. Again, obviously you would have to complete all of the mini quests to have the best chance of the various different chefs. And like I said, you will need a pretty high cooking level for those upper end mini quests but that does seem like a really cool addition to the cooking skill and the cooking guild as a whole not only is it extremely valuable it makes it worthwhile doing but it also breaks up the monotony of cooking especially if you're cooking for long extended periods of time which is always good rewarding the player for being a little bit more attentive to the screen and engaging with these tasks seems like a very good approach in my opinion let me know down in the description below what you think of this and what do you think of other guilds what kind of guilds do you want to see fully realized in the modern game and revamped to today's standards i'd love to hear your thoughts I'd love to see things like the ranged and magic skills be up to par with something like the warrior's guild in terms of the different types of activities you'll be able to do or the types of rewards you'd be able to receive from those guilds. Now I understand those aren't technically skilling guilds, they are combat ones, but it just seems very cool to have a little bit of parity among those seen as the warriors one definitely outclasses the other two. I mean the crafting guild could use a lot of love as well, potentially the prayer guild, I don't know. Again, let me know down below what kind of things you would like to see for these guilds and what kind of thoughts you have for this cooking guild revamp overall. That will actually close out the video guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you are not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on all things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Peace.